Hello, Internet. Welcome to Anointed Gates Church live service. We're here. We already been here. I'm actually almost petered out. Uh, we've been praising at a level that made me know I'm ready. But uh, we want to welcome you. And so we'll start as we always do. We'll start with a prayer. So, Lord God, I ask that you decrease me so that I will not get in my way or yours, Lord God. I pray that you use your servant, Lord God, to help the people that you have sent. I pray, Lord God, that you put a rhema anointing on and favor on the word that has been prepared. And I pray that the hearer is convicted to become a doer because the word was passed on from you to them. It's my prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. I ain't been asleep, but I feel like I'm rested. How about that? Huh? Yeah, y'all made me sing pretty hard, though, y'all. Y'all sound better than me. So I don't know why y'all wasn't letting it go. I know next week, while we're counting on you guys to do everything that's needed, y'all gonna sing a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. Clap your hands for the Father. Let me know if I'm talking to some believers in here because this word... I know, uh, I'm glad we got some space at the house. Because I know my wife was like, what is he doing? I was all over the house last night. It started around 1030. And the word began to come. And I was, I was hearing it. And, and uh, she'll tell you as my witness that uh, I like to watch the news and you know, if we're not watching the Christian station, I watch news. She said I watch it like a movie. And uh, I didn't want the TV on. I could feel a sensation in the word that made me say, I want your total and complete attention. And that's what I'm going to ask y'all to give right now. Amen. I'm going to ask you not to let yourself lose focus on anything. If somebody come through the door, if the ceiling tile drop out, mm -hmm. if y'all hear a big boom, I want you to look forward and tune in like your life depended on it. Amen. Because I'm believing in what God has went through through me, that if you listen to me and adhere to what you hear, God is trying to tell you something that you will be able to hear and use for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. Now that's pretty confident, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so let's try it. Amen. Let's try and see what I'm talking about. Because it's the right time. In a time such as this, in a world that we live in, and how everybody got an opinion on this and on that, want to tell you how to do this and that, how you wondering about this or that, the, the, the mass confusion that we exist in causes us to need more than ourselves. It causes us to need God more than we ever did because even when you're doing the right thing, saying the right thing, feeling the right thing, things can happen to you beyond your control. And it don't look like it's getting any better. But I don't have to worry about all the things that's happening in this world because, let me, let me, let me, let me do it this way. How many of y'all know what a whale is? The big fish, the whale. See, see, a whale can dive deep, deep down the ocean, not like us. And the whale breathes air. He can dive deep, deep down into the ocean. But every now and then, he got to come up and he got to get some air. You hear me? And, 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 and sister, I was asking nobody to lose focus, so I want everybody, including the Levites of the church, to focus because if you're working for God, you got to learn how to focus more than somebody who need God and don't know how to get him because you can't be the distraction that make them miss the miracle five minutes before it's ready to happen. This is the place where we give reverence and homage to God. And I know the world don't want to talk about God and they don't want you to talk about Jesus, but you're in the place right now where you're free to worship the Savior. Amen? Amen. Thank you, God. Now, I was talking about a well because every now and then the well got to come up out of the water to get some air. Now, you know what that represents to me? That even though the well is in the water, he can live there, 
he still got to go to a different place to get his life source. He got to come up to a different environment that he don't exist in to get what he needs to continue to live. Huh? And see, that's just like us. See, some of us don't realize we're in an environment that is not our home. We're in an environment where we need to reach to another place to get the life source that we need in order to exist in this place. And it ain't never been a time like right now where we need to understand we need more than we can see yes. down here, down here. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is the right time. A time such as this. See, I need you to understand. Uh, Joyce Meyer tried to tell you when she said, the battlefield is in your mind. She, she, uh, T.D. Jakes uh, tried to tell you, think about it. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, studying uh, Pastor Joe Osteen, and he was saying, and I believe him, and I'm going to preach from that precept, that if you think better, mm -hmm. you'll learn how to live better. Amen. 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 Clap your hands if you agree with hearing that. See, the way you think has power over your destiny. Uh, God has equipped us to handle anything that comes our way, but sometimes we don't live like that. Huh? Life has beat us up and has intoxicated us to a level where sometimes we doubt our very existence. Some of us get so bad off we wish we didn't wake up. But when we learn to cancel thoughts, to delete those kind of thoughts that keep you down, those kind, and focus on what God has said about you, you're going to become a winner. <laughs> See, natural winners, and that's who you are, that's who we all are, that's who we were created to be, anyhow. In the first place, um, when I share these teachings from Pastor Joe, this is going to be for a fresh inspiration. See, sometimes you be hungry for food, and God is saying, I'm going to feed your spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, fasting is to train you not to think about your natural Jesus. desire, Jesus. but to Tune into, like you're turning the channel on a TV. Tune into the spiritual channel Amen. that's about to change your life. Yes. And I agree with these things fully in a time such as this. If you think better, you live better. Say it. If you think better, you live better. Say it loud. If you think better, you live better. If you think better, you live better. Victory in life yeah. begins in your mind. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The Bible teaches us as a man thinks, so is he. Yeah. Now, we must be forgetting that because when you're thinking those bad thoughts, you don't want to be what you think. Yeah. So you got to do something to help you with you. Amen? Yeah. So let me put it to you like this. Minds are much like computers. huh? These itty bitty committees are always working even when you want them turned off. They still going. Doo, 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 doo. You focused on something you're worried about, you're scared of. You focused on something you desire so much, you focus on something you don't have. Something is always going over the teletape across the head of your mind. huh? Minds are much like computers. But how you program that computer, that's how it's going to function. Amen. Huh? True, true. So, so good or bad, whatever you tell that computer, so shall it be. Huh? Yeah. But what should be done to a mind that harbors negative energy, negative thinking, Amen. negative stuff, that beat down information? What should be done 
with such a mind. Out there in the recovery world, they always talk about it's a thinking disease. And when you got a bad relationship, you say, if I just had a better relationship. When the job don't pay you enough, if I just had a better job. When the house ain't big enough, if I just had a bigger house, a bigger car, more money. You think, or you try to, think your way into a solution. But see, when you, what should be done when a mind is holding on to bad thinking? You should reprogram it. See, you should re reprogram your mind. First, you have to find, because some of y'all computer savvy, first you got to find your delete button. Huh? You know, if you're on a, on, a, on a terminal, you look for that control alt delete. Huh? And, and when, when it's negative, boop, boop, delete. Every time it come up, boop, boop, delete. See, you got to learn how to Delete negative thoughts the moment they appear. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Because oh, yeah. God programmed you to live abundantly. Yes. Yes. God programmed you to live victoriously. Yes. God programmed you to live with a life of faith. And so when you go get help from other people, they don't want you to talk about God, but you fight back. Because you need to talk about God because you need him. Just like the people who are telling you not to talk about him need him. We all need God. Clap your hands for the Lord. So if you're not living right right now, you woke up this morning. So clap your hands for yourself. You got another chance. See, see, you have to learn to hit the delete button you've created for controlling your mind. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Right? Yeah. And if you're going to reach your greatest potential, you're going to have to get good at hitting the delete button. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you can just hit it once and get this fixed because some of us right. is, is kind of messed up, you know. We're going to have to hit that button pretty often yeah. <laughs> until we get ourselves... <laughs> to a place where we ain't got to hit it so much, but hit it as many times as you need to because it works. And after that, then you're going to have to learn to guard your mind. You're going to have to watch what stuff going in there. You are the manager of that committee up there. See, it's the stuff you decide upon. It's the stuff you choose. It's the stuff you involve yourself with that gives you the thoughts about what you're thinking about in your mind. Amen. So sometimes if you know it ain't good for you, don't do it so you don't have to think about it. These are simple instructions, but if you follow them, you got a new life coming. You have to clear out all the negative things that people say about you. Huh? You got to clear out all the negative things that you think about yourself. Right. True, true, huh? Right. You got to replace that junk right. with good stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. when I was in college, and yeah, I've been there. When I was in college and I was in a computer class, they would say, junk in, junk, junk out. out. That's right. Good stuff in, good, good stuff out. You do a good seed, plant good seeds, and good fruit going to come. Yeah. You plant bad seeds, and junky fruit going to come. Right. <laughs> Negative thoughts you have about yourself, replace that junk with good stuff. Yeah. I say you got to start watering the good seeds in your life. Yes. Huh? Yeah. You got to plant good yeah. seeds in your life. Don't worry about if you got a bear garden right now. Just start right now yeah. planting the right seeds. Yes. The kind of seeds that's going to blossom into what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. So water the right seeds. You're not defective. Don't tell yourself that. Amen. You're not flawed. Don't tell yourself that. You've been fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. Yeah. God says he created a masterpiece in you. Yeah. 
You are part of a royal priesthood. Yeah. See, we don't talk about these things, so we forget who we are, and we don't think about whose we are. So we walk around here like a deer with a broken leg, limping and can't run when the lion comes. And we got to get out of the way of the lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> Too much selfish? No, I'm giving you some excitement on illustration so you don't forget what was said. Huh? I can stand here, my name is Pastor Clifford. I can stand here and say, if you didn't watch Clifford the Big Red Dog, listen to Clifford the Big Black Preacher. <laughs> There's some battling, y'all, going on in your mind. That's what's going on. It's like this. Yes. No. I, I am. I am not. I can't. No, I can't. Sowing seeds of doubt in your own thinking. Most of why you don't move on what you should move on is because of your thinking. So consider how you were programmed. Could it be that you have accepted some wrong things in your mind because of the environment you was raised in? Did somebody tell you you would never be nothing? You would never amount to nothing? You ugly? You stupid? You can't? You never will? Your daddy wasn't no good? Your mama wasn't no good? Your kids ain't no good? Your dog ain't no good? The house you live in ain't no good? Your pants and dress ain't no good? Your nurture, was it improper? Could it be how I was raised? Well, today, strongholds getting ready to be broken. Amen. Pastor Clifford to tell you how we're going to break up some of this foul ground. See, I say negativity is not your lot in life. Amen. It is not what you're supposed to hold on to. It's breaking you, so break it off. It's breaking you, so delete it. Yes. It's breaking you, so get it behind you. Yes. Clear out that virus. Jesus. Are you allowing negative thoughts to sink all through you, taking away the potential that's still in you? Don't do it. If you are, stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Remove all the negative labels. Don't let people label you what you can or cannot do. Let no one tell you who or what you can be or cannot be. That's God's job. Labels are like weeds. You're going to have to get out your lawnmower. Cut them down. Cut them down. Cut them down. The only power that a label somebody is calling you has is the power that you give it. Amen. And you're going to have to stop giving it power because the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. And the battle is not out here. The battle is in your mind. And if you want victory, clean up your stinking thinking. God labels you too. God labeled you like this. He said you are strong and you are talented and you are valuable and you are beautiful and you're more than a conqueror. See, these ain't the conversations you hear every day in life. They want to talk about basketball wives and how they argue over. You bring the heat, I'm going to bring the fire. And you find yourself attracted, seduced, Lusting, that nonsense that subconsciously is destroying the moral values that God put in you to be the good person he created you to be. Huh? Your thoughts are important, especially when you're thinking the right thing. Clap your hands for the Lord. So how do you see things in your mind? How do you view it? Do you view it like God views it? Again, the real battle takes place in your mind. 
That's where all your struggles lie. Huh? Whatever label you wear or accept, you need to know this. Whatever label you wear or accept, that's what you're going to become. Exactly what the label says. Look, if you talk about kids, you say, those is baby kids. You know you're going to think they're going to be bad. Right. Because Bebe as a label has a way of saying that the person labeled Bebe is a bad person. Right. And see, your kids ain't bad. They're just active. And you lazy and you ain't took them to the park. So because they tearing up the house because they got energy they need to burn, it ain't their fault you won't take them out where they can tear the grass up. They tore up your pretty couch and now you mad. Don't you say, I can't take them... That stuff costs too much. See the point in Kings Island and Disney World and Disneyland. Well, take them to Forest Hills. Take them to the lake. Take them for a car ride. Take them to the ice cream shop and get the economy ice cream cone. Just take them. Thank you. So remove as soon as possible. Any label that's going to hold you back from what God says you are. Remove any label that limits you in any way because you serve a supernatural God. Yes, yes you do. And a saint on their knees is stronger than an army on his feet. The opinion of people will never be able to compare to the power of God. Amen. You need to understand this so you can understand who you are because I'm hoping that when I finish, you even going to understand whose you are, who you belong to, and you don't belong to. Uh, relationship does not mean ownership. Break the word down. Relate means to communicate. Ship means together. So relationship means communicating together. If you deal with somebody more than once, you're in a relationship. Friendship, neighborship, work relationships, marital relationship, Christian, church relationship. There's all kind of relationship. Relationship does not equal ownership. The only person that owns you is the ever-loving God, and he ain't did nothing but told you I got good plans for your life. Now, if you got a good partner, they can run a close second, but doesn't be God. Amen, amen. Just keep it in order. Yes. I don't care how cute they is, yes. or if they got pretty braids and stuff. Amen. <laughs> amen. It's right. So, what you are labeled is what you become. If it's not a good label, remove it as soon as possible. We serve a supernatural God, and a saint on their knees is stronger than an army on his feet. Amen. God doesn't negatively label those he loves. You have an amazing future, whether you can see it or not. Amen. See, that tree that's growing in your yard right now, right now it's underground. But just because you don't see it don't mean ain't nothing going on. Huh? You can't see everything that's going on in your life. See, I know I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Some of y'all in pain from the way your life is. But see, pain not only is a great motivator, pain is an indication that something is going on. Amen. So I'm going to break it down for you on how pain in your life can be a communication from God to tell you I'm talking to you. See, you have the right personality, you have the right gifts, you have the right looks, you have the right color, you have the right pedigree. God's word says you are good. Just tell yourself, I am good. I am good. Say it louder. I am good. You don't believe it? I, I am good. You better tell yourself. I am good. I am good. Amen. I know that's right. Huh? Because what does what you think about me going to change in my life unless I give it the power? Huh? I got to think what I need to think about me in my life. And I've been thinking some boo-boo. So I need to go to the bathroom and get it cleaned up. Huh? I need to come out the bathroom squeaky clean. See, because in God's chemical laboratory of redemption, God can take a black soul and dip it in red blood 
and bring it out white as snow. That's what I know. God can take a brown cow and let it eat green grass and it'll give you white milk. See, God don't need. Jesus took, he didn't drink wine. Jesus made wine because his mother asked him to make wine. And he, see, me and you, we need grapes to make wine. Yeah. Jesus took some water. He didn't even need the ingredients we need. And he made, they say, the best wine. So what you're doing, if you don't want to believe Jesus, you are exiting out in your own life. The best thing you can have to help you with your life. You are a masterpiece. you God's masterpiece. You weren't created to live an average life. You have seeds of greatness. On the inside of you. Yeah, amen. You can still be a giant killer. Yeah. yeah, you. You can still be just like David killed Goliath. You can kill those big problems in your life. You just got to get ready to learn how to fight. Yeah, amen. You got to first hit the delete button. Yeah. You got to then guard your mind. Mm -hmm. And then you got to be strong and of good courage. And go to God and say let's do this. And get busy changing your life. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Listen. Let's, let's go to science class. Uh, the experts built the Titanic and it sank. Amateurs built the ark and it floated. Nor didn't go to no school. He just listened to God. They didn't even know what rain was. But he said, I heard it. Because he said it. It is. And I'm getting ready. See, that's how your faith ought to be. You ought to know what God is saying to you because you spent some time with him. And when he tells you something, even if it ain't what you want to hear, you ought to do what you heard so you can get where you ain't been. You can get it going. See, some of y'all still got that old car in the garage. And the reason why you ain't getting no new car because you won't get rid of the old stuff. Right, yeah. I done told you about this church. We finna get rid of everything we don't need so we can bring in everything we do. Clap your hands for the Lord. One man's garbage is another man's treasure. So we ain't got no junky, junky stuff. But we got stuff in the way of the stuff we supposed to get. So we need to donate to somebody in need. So we gonna need some hands. When, when, when Pastor and I get back, we, especially all the men that we know we got here that ain't here right now, whether they're in the hospital or on travels right now. We're going to need all hands on deck. We're going to need all hands on deck on the day we'll cook for y'all and all of that. But we're going to do a, a, a piercing. We're going to do a stripping. We're going to do a cleaning. And uh, she didn't know it, but she was in my prayers last night. Uh, this is how... Uh, I'm going to speak it into existence. This is how Minister Tanya going to get her wings. She's going to get put in charge of people who just coming in, who know a whole lot about the streets and not as much about God. And she's going to use her own life and tell them about God and how God has changed her life, her testimony. And they're going to be able to identify with her testimony and because of the help she's going to have to give those incoming people, it's going to help her with her own situations. Clap your hands to the Lord. Because can't nobody clean better than uh, Deacon is Tanya or teach how to clean better than Deacon is Tanya. Only a strong second or a first or they got to compete. Maybe we'll have a competition between Deacon is Janice and Deacon is Tanya. Only clean because they both, they down by law for what they do. One day, one of y'all gonna be able to cook like a uh, mother Lula. Yeah. 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 I ain't throwing out names for on purpose because I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to have two of my sisters here yeah. in the uh, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. They both know how to cook. One of them won't, but that's okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they, I guess, they know who I'm talking about. <laughs> But we're going to get the right gifts going. We're going to get up off our gifts and get them into the 
earth we're going to do what God asks us to do for him. Glory be to God. Look. Every one of y'all got a new name coming. But you're going to have to release the full you. you, you you're going to have to do it without doubting your faith in God. Huh? You got to stop doubting you. You got to believe in you and the faith you don't have. Bring all your broken pieces and what little faith you have. Bring it to God and let him exchange his beauty for your ashes. Huh? Without giving credit so much to the mistakes you've made in life. If you didn't make mistakes, you wouldn't be in a position where you could learn anything. Right. 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 Yeah. Had you never failed, you would never grow. Victorious, victorious person. Clap your hand for yourself. And it's time to come out of your cocoon. Yes. Huh? Change and transformation. You will not do that in my sanctuary. You're going to get out of here and you ain't going to hold no conversations. I don't care what's going on. This shall never happen again. Get out. Never get in front of God. I need God just like you. But you ain't going to stop me from getting mine. You don't have to get yours. But I'm going to get mine. All of us fight ourselves from the mistakes we make. All of us get condemned sometimes. All of us are afraid sometimes. All of us feel less than sometimes. And the only way you're going to get to feel more than is give it over to God. Amen. Amen. Let him fix it. When he sang the song, he can fix it for you. Some of you think you all right. You done got com comfortable with familiar pain. Sometimes you don't think you can go any higher. That's why you ain't trying. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Trying to give you some concept that's going to push you to a further place. Because every one of you can do more than you do. And I want you to. I believe in you. I believe in all the saints that are already here. And I believe in the ones who are getting ready to come here. I believe in us. Because God believes in us. Clap your hands for the Lord. Inside of each one of us is a blessed and prosperous, victorious person. It's time to come out of your cocoon. Transformation takes place when you renew your mind, the Bible says. The Bible tells us to renew our mind every day. Did you yesterday think about what you did and today think differently? When I mess up, I need to go over it. Look at what I did. Own it. And then get rid of it. Delete The Bible says renew our mind daily. Yeah. That shows everybody that everybody needs to know how to reprogram their mind. Mm -hmm. There ain't a one of us in here that's perfect. Amen. And ain't a one of us in here that knows all the answers. Amen. There ain't a one of us in here that got all the solutions. But when we get together in here, we got everything that we need. Amen. The power is in the agreement. The power is in the cooperation. The power in, in you not thinking so much of yourself and thinking so much of God in all of us. That's where we're going to find the power. And I'm seeking the power. I'm going to a new level with you or without you, but I'm going with you. That's the way I'm going to think. But I look when I get there who stayed. huh? The boosters for the rocket going to fall off. That's those people who helped, but they couldn't stay because they couldn't go. They didn't, couldn't go high enough. They couldn't reach long enough. They wouldn't work that extra minute, pray that extra minute, listen that extra minute. Sometimes people don't care how smart you are. Sometimes they just wish you had that heart, a humble heart, to listen so you can understand where they are. Because if you let them tell you what's wrong, then and only then will you exactly know how to help. How can you help me if you don't know what's wrong with me? Amen. So you need to tell the truth on what's wrong with you, and I need to wait so I can help you exactly how you need. 
Ain't no sense in me working on your hand and your foot hurt. Ain't no sense in me working on your head and your back hurt. Back work is for backs. Head work is for heads. I was going to give somebody a difficult job. I was going to ask them to braid my hand. I'm just checking to see if you're listening. <laughs> No, they say they coming out with wigs, with braids. Well, yeah, okay. Pull them right on. I'll be the roster mom. Yeah, yeah. Listen. Your butterfly spirit that's inside of you is waiting to soar, to fly. But it's held by the cocoon because it's trying to break the cocoon and you keep closing it up with that old stuff in your life that don't want to let your good spirit out. You see, that's how the deceiver works. He has to trick you. He has to fool you. He has to make you think that you're all right when you're not. He has to make you think that you know when you don't. He has to make you think you can do it when you can't. You can only do it with Christ. Only what you do with Christ is possible and going to last. But the deceiver don't want you to know that. That's why he don't want you to come through those doors. Right. See, because he's not welcome in here. Right. The, you know, if, if this was a, a place where they use chemicals, he would be dismissed for insufficient funds. <laughs> he couldn't come in because he don't have enough to enter. Yeah. See, he ain't got enough God. He ain't got enough spirit. He ain't got enough prayer. He ain't got enough goodwill. He don't have enough love. He don't have enough mercy. And he sure don't have enough grace. So if you don't have those things so that you can have sympathy and empathy and love and concern and the willingness to serve, you need those things to exist up in here. See, don't always come looking for what God can do for you. Be grateful about what he has done and come and see what you can do for God. Because the moment that you start working for God, God is going to be inclined to work for you. Every day that you think the right thoughts, you're going to start breaking that cocoon that keeps you from I'm coming out. Ain't that Donna Summer? No. I'm coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, I don't know the names. I just heard some. <laughs> I want the world to know. I got to let it show. Right? I'm coming out. Right. See, you ought to want to come out in your face. You ought to be just that bold. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with him? He yeah. walking down the street. I'm coming out. Oh, I want the world to know. When that spiritual song came on today, that old school song, because I come from Southern parents, that old school song that came out, and I started doing like this. And they thought, look at him. <laughs> no, I can hear the spirit. Yeah. I hear with a spiritual ear. And when good work, see, because you know what makes music bad? Not the beat. The words. The words, yeah. words have power. Yeah. That's why you got to speak powerful, good words over yourself. Yeah. I am beautiful. I am powerful. I am great. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things yeah. through Christ yeah. who strengthens me. When I am weak, God is strong. You got to say, why don't you talk to yourself? You scared somebody going to think you're crazy? If they do say I'm crazy about Jesus. Amen. Huh? Yeah. I wish somebody would try to get me not to talk about the Lord. You got a fight coming. You know, kids, when they was little, the one thing you couldn't do, I don't know if it's so much with girls, because I ain't never been a girl, never will be one, but boys, if you talked about my mama, mm -hmm. even if she wasn't the right kind of mama, right. if you talked about my mama, I'm going to meet you after school, <laughs> right? Some of us would say, I'm going to meet you right now. You talk about my mama, I'll sock you right there. They're like, what did y'all doing? He talked about my mama. Right? That's the way you got to be about your faith. When people start talking about, oh, you shouldn't go to church. Oh, you shouldn't sing. Oh, you shouldn't serve. We quit. Why didn't you quit? We going to the funky jam. Why aren't you going to the funky jam? 
We, we finna go blow one. Why don't you want to blow one? We finna go rob the bank. Don't you want to come? Don't you want to share? Uh -oh. Don't think the world won't invite you just like that. And then when y'all steal the money, they start shooting each other because they don't really want to split it. I'm trying to tell y'all real stuff. I'm not standing before you trying to be cute, even though I hope I am. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I say those things because I'm confident in God. See, what you think, see, I met a preacher with no arms and one leg, and he has a doctor degree, and he speaks all over the world. He cannot walk, but he talked with power because he understand the power in God's creation. So how can a one leg, no arm preacher feel good about himself and here you are with all your limbs you got all your abilities you got all your functionalities and you feeling bad about yourself you ought to be shame of yourself I'm gonna shame you into a better situation I was in the military and there was a man I was working at Walter Reed Army Medical Center as an x-ray technician in the United States Army in Washington, D.C. There was a man on the gurney who had came from Desert Storm, and whatever he got exposed to and however he had gotten injured, he had to lay on a gurney. He couldn't walk. And he was one of the most positive people I ever met in my life. What he demonstrated to me is you don't have to take a disability and lean on it. You can take a disability to be a motivator and then let people see you be highly positive in a down-looking situation and you might be able to give them some strength. Glory to his name. Don't have doubtful faith. I want y'all to start looking behind y'all rough exteriors. You know, how you look before you get in the mirror, right. before you put on that Maxine Noxima, or <laughs> Najee, uh, am I saying uh, makeup's right? I, I don't know the name of it. <laughs> Maybelline, thank you. <laughs> uh, you men, before y'all get put on y'all just for men to go to the barber shop and get out your shoe polish and, and, and dress up. You know, we clean up real good. Huh? Work on the inside. Huh? We ain't got no, we ain't got no labor problem. We ain't got no, we ain't got no singing problem. We ain't got no, no home problem. We got heart problems. Our hearts ain't right. God says our hearts need work. And, and stop looking at other people. That's like looking out the window when you should be looking in the mirror. Huh? Stop looking out and start looking within. The problem is not outside of you, it's in you. The enemy is in the me. It's royalty in you. The Bible says you are royal priesthood. You were created to soar like eagles. So get rid of that creepy, squirmy thought that keep going through your mind. Begin to think of yourself and think yourself to victory. When you worry, you're meditating on the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. You are. Amen. Listen, worry is faith in reverse. Amen. See, if you pray, don't worry. Amen. If you're going to worry, why pray? Right. <laughs> we, uh, mm. Prayer changes things. Yes. Faith in prayer changes even more things. Yes. When you seek in peace in your life, mm -hmm. I want you to learn to think yourself happy. Yes. When you, if you want to be happy, how he said, "What is that? What, what did he tell you?" Kurt Franklin. If you want to be happy, y'all know the song. Get it. Listen to it. He ain't lying. If you do what he said. See, that's what's happening. 
More spiritual people need to speak to more spiritual people. We ought to start speaking to spiritual people because what evil got to do with good? And so if all you're going to do is talk to evil people, you're never going to learn what good people got to tell you, to encourage you by, to uplift you with, to motivate you from, to help you along with. Do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Think yourself happy. I thought I hit that. You're never going to make it. Really? Yes, I will. <laughs> You're never going to get that job. Did it? Yes, I am. <clears throat> You'll never get away from that addiction. Did it? I'm going to go and help people with it. That's going to keep me from doing it. You'll never be a leader. Did it? I'm going to be a volunteer so I can learn to be a leader. Hallelujah. Huh? You're going to have to change some things. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. You're going you, you to be like my little sister Victoria over there. She's going to have to. See, last night I got to end 30 minutes sooner so she can get here 30 minutes early because she got some beautiful children and she is a priest. Uh, she's a, 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 a minister of the word. She sticks with it no matter where her life says her. So what we have to do as saints is not judge her. We encourage her. Come here a little earlier, baby. Amen. <laughs> Amen. This is how we do it. That's right. This is how we do it. Help See, if y'all was going to expect me to be a stuffed shirt preacher trying to be have a kingdom of self, I don't want no kingdom of me. I want us all to get in the kingdom of God and get better for the kingdom of God and get ready for the kingdom of God and start working for the kingdom of God because I can't but we can. Clap your hands for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When you become what you believe, that's because you believe what you've become. Right. Pay attention to what is playing in the theater of your mind. That's right. Change the show to a theater near you. Fill your mind with the right thoughts. You need to take inventory of who is renting space in your head. People don't have the final say over you. Sometimes to gain or grow in faith, you have to ignore the negative report. For instance, a doctor, you got two days to live. Man, you better go. <laughs> your sugar is 853. You're going to have to take insulin the rest of your life. Man, shut up. You got high blood pressure and you're going to die in five minutes. Better say your last rites. The devil is a lie. You will never get your GED. I'm going to school tomorrow. You will never be married. I'm going to settle down, go to church, marry the church, and then I'm going to find my spouse. I don't know, that was for somebody. That just came out of nowhere. You'll never walk again. God grow you some limbs. Get you up out of a wheelchair. Make you drop the walker. You don't believe you'll drop a walker? Ask Sister Janet. She leave her walker here twice a month. She come here with her walker and she need to get it, but she be talking to her pastor, that lady pastor. And they get to talking so much and mother friend get in the conversation. And next thing you know, they leave. I see a couple pair of high heel shoes. I see a a walker and a coat. I say, they didn't get nothing. They was, uh, they was really talking. And then, get outside and somebody left their car key. But that shows the goodness of God. Because they be enjoying the Lord so much, they forget about canes. <laughs> Remember, your victory starts in your thinking. Okay? The whole key to this teaching is what's going on in your thought life. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You see, really, you are pregnant. 
I don't want to tell you all this. You are pregnant with possibilities. Huh? Huh? Just because you don't see it right now doesn't mean it ain't growing in you. And then it ain't going to happen. And I can say it's still going to come to pass. See, because I, I like to say to you something, that there's something kicking inside of you. See, you only came here to hear about God, but God came here to germinate some of you pregnant yeah. with possibilities. Yeah. Huh? Amen. You're pregnant with success. Yes. You're pregnant with new chances. Amen. You're pregnant with ideas unbirthed. You're pregnant with the calling on your life. You're pregnant with new opportunities. You, you're pregnant with a, a, a destiny, your destiny, being rediscovered. That's what your pregnancy is about. And don't judge your new life by what you see in your circumstances because the painful circumstances you find yourself in right now is prepping you for your birthing. You are, you know, they, they do, what, what do they do with women when they're getting ready to have a birthday? They do that. You know, teach them how to breathe and how to, what do you call it, Lamar's baby? I'm going to say, I don't know. I ain't never had a baby. <laughs> but Lamar's, see, God wants you to know that your pain in your life is your Lamar's. It's prepping you for your birth thing. Huh? Huh? Listen, listen. Listen, you were made for far more than what's already going down in your life. So wake up. Soon you're getting ready to give birth to what God is doing in you. Huh? To something. It's going to advance you. It's going to take you farther. Farther than you could ever imagine. But you got to recognize your labor pains. You got to stop looking at the circumstances in your life, crying about them and say, I'm going through this because God is trying to do something with me. Huh? You're thinking now. See how we can turn it around? You thought you was doomed when you came here. You thought it was gloom when you came here. And God wanted me to tell you that pain is your preparation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. For your birthing. What he has planned for your life. Your circumstance. Hmm. But you got to recognize your labor pain. And, 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 and if, if they're too much for you, then prayer is your epidural. <laughs> they laughing like, he's he taking us all through prayers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, prayer is your epidural. It's going to loosen and loose the pain. But they don't stop the pain. Prayer don't stop the pain. Prayer prepares you to go through the pain. Because when you see the baby, come on. Sometimes what you call or thought was a setback is really just labor pains because your setback is truly a setup for your comeback. Yeah. Clap your hands for the Lord. So keep on believing in God and keep on doing what you're supposed to do. God promise is in you. And as you listen to me, your thinking is saying to you, there's something good in me. And I know it is. I know you're thinking that now. And it's time for you to step it up. It's time for you to quit using excuses. You ain't no victim. You've been a volunteer all your life. So now, since you're going to volunteer, why don't you become victorious? You can go from a victim to a volunteer to a victorious person. And it's the same person we talk about. I went from a teacher to a leecher to a preacher. And I stand before you saying, but God. Got to tell yourself there's something good about me. Hallelujah. Tell yourself there's something good about me. No matter your behavior, say there's something good about me. 
and the good that's about me, I'm going to find it so I can use it for myself. And Lord, I want to use it for you. I'm giving myself away so you can use me. Help me, Father. Step it up. There are seeds inside of you just waiting to grow. Yes. Nourish them with the word. Yes. Nourish them with prayer. Yes. Nourish them with love for other people. Yes. Nourish them with a relationship reestablished with God. Mm -hmm. Nourish the seeds inside. And I need to tell you that in order for this to all be real, the promise is going to have to come through you. Amen. Your promise can't come through me. You got to do it. See, see your, your, your growth ain't going to come through me. I can help you grow, but you got to help you grow. Amen. You got to stop laying around waiting for people to do everything you need. Get up off your grand imagination. And start doing what you need yourself. Y'all do hair. Y'all shop. Y'all find relations. Help yourself. You go get the house. You go get the car. You go get the shop. You know, um, somebody was asking me. They say, Pastor, how can I repair my credit? I, I didn't think that was a strange question. I said, you really want me to tell you? Mm -hmm. They said, yeah, Pastor, how can I repair? I heard you was an economist. You went to college for economics. How can I repair my credit? I said, pay them people. Right. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. That's, the truth. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I said, yeah. yeah. That didn't cover it. <laughs> God's promise is in you. Amen. You are the right person. Don't let your destiny wait or go away by you waiting on somebody else to bring it. Go get it. Kick the dough down if you have to. But go get your destiny. People be talking about you this and you could have did this long time ago and you know it and you wanted it and it was your dream and you got detoured, you did this, you did that, now you wondering with all the baggage and weight you carry because it's good things you can't get rid of. Will I ever be what I dreamed to be? I said yes. Amen. You've made it difficult, but yes. Mm -hmm. I know mothers that have become teachers even though they got nine kids. I know men that have become bankers even though they got three baby mamas. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just talking to y'all. Huh? God is able to fix it. And I'm tired of them saying that the church ain't the place you can get it fixed. Because if you come to the church and you tell them the exact nature of what's going on with you and not worried about what somebody think about you, then you'll get the exact fix you need. I'm here at the church. Hallelujah. And I'm a candidate of the church. I'm a member too. <laughs> God ain't going to change his mind. And he ain't going to change his mind about you. I'm coming to a close. So fan your flame. Stir up your gifts. The promise is truly in you. Don't be surprised by people opposing you. Dare to dream big. There's a fire shut up in your bones. If you listen to me, you're going to accomplish some things more than you ever thought possible. We serve an awesome God. You got you, you to gotta learn to ask big. You got to stop asking for little stuff. Don't pray just to get by. Don't pray just to survive. Ask God to let you thrive. Ask him for the overflow. Ask him to give you more than you need so you can give somebody else something. Pray. Pray to God like that. Dare to ask big. You're more than enough. God has more than enough. Ask to be a difference maker. Ask to set a standard. Hallelujah. You can do it. No more weak and sick prayers. Pray with conviction. Pray with confidence. Pray with authority. This will please God. This new way you're going to act. 
Stand out. Stand up. Make a difference. You have what you need. What you have right now is what you need right now to fulfill your destiny. Don't despise, don't despise your small beginning. Amen. Huh? You might underestimate what you're working with. You might underestimate what you have. Huh? You might mistake the value of what you're working with. Right. Use what God has given you. Yeah. And wait for him to give you some more. Be confident in who you are. Keep your crown. How you see you is very important. Your perception of yourself will determine what kind of life you live. Remember, it's quality over quantity. The crown of honor which comes from God is yours to take. The enemy's main tool is deception. Don't be deceived by the devil. You know that word denial? D-E-N-I-A-L. It says, let me take the letters. Don't even know I am lying to myself. I'm stuck in something that I tell you, oh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> the best life you could ever desire. <laughs> Go home and be crying like the world. Because I wasn't able to tell you I'm toe from the floor. I dressed up real good. You can see me wearing my E. Sailor on and Versace and uh, low mean. I'm making that up. Uh, but then when I get home, it's a garbage can underneath me. All right. Jesus. That ain't the way Christians ought to do. We ought to come in here and say, Lord, I can't stop. Lord, help me. Lord, I don't know. Lord, show me. Lord, I'm willing. I'm coming. If you show me, if if, if, if I take one step, will you take two? God's going to sell you. He will. I don't know if y'all believe this. See, if you ain't spiritual, none of this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Come on, help somebody. And I'm going to let you go because you probably got a game to go watch. Mm -hmm. But if you are spiritual, these are the things that we must do. Amen. We must talk to God about us. That's right. We must ask for his help with us. Amen. And God has sent the Holy Spirit to do for us exceedingly and abundantly yeah. more than we can think, say, or ask. The Holy Spirit is God's connection that when you do your natural, he'll put his super on top of it. That's how you do supernatural things. Some of the things that you're going to do that's going to be so wonderful, it ain't going to be because you did it. It's going to be because God did it in you. And you don't need other people's approval. Negative thoughts come from the enemy. Send them back. Return the sender. And I know his address. You know, they say return to send that address unknown. I know where he lives. Get behind me. Get under my foot. And get on behind me, Satan. Because, see, I'm going to tell you something. I've never seen a Brinks truck follow a hearse. When you die, you had that appointment. But, see, we as believers, we know when we die, we go somewhere else that's good. So we prepare for it like playing a game. We, we prepare that when we get our turn to come into the game, uh, we are ready. Because the Bible teaches that if you don't get ready, you're going somewhere too. But it ain't good. And I'd rather prepare to go to heaven and be with the Lord and be wrong than not prepare to go to heaven and die and find out that God was real all the time. See, I don't want any of y'all to live forever in hell. Because some of y'all have started living in hell already. Jesus, Jesus. It's like the walking dead. I see so many of my brothers and sisters out here. Their life is beating them up so bad. They dead already. They just ain't laid down in the casket. So we as Christians are ambassadors from God. And we got to help those people. Amen. I, I, I think God has, has had told me. I, I, I've said enough. I've said a lot of things. And I didn't know how far I would go with it. But I'm here to tell you that if you don't have God, you really don't have yourself. Amen. And the reason why you feel it's such a loss is because it was never designed for you to do this thing by yourself. So I'm inviting those of you who don't know 
Christ and the free pardon of their sin. I'm inviting those of you who are looking for something different in life that only God can do. God, I got a prayer that only you can answer. I got a need that only you can provide. I need you to examine your life and decide for yourself could it be my thinking? Am I my own? Am I sleeping with the enemy? Enemy? Could I possibly need a cleansing? A purging? Lord, what's wrong in me? Ask yourself that question. Some quiet music for a minute. I'll give them 30 seconds to think about their own life. Something soft. Lord, help me with me. Show me me, Father. Be my mirror to my soul. That's what I said, little man. Lord, sometimes I reach out to friends and they can't do it. I reach out to family and they're not able. I reach out to them, still no answer. But I know I'm missing something. Show me, Lord. Show me me. And I'll be careful to give you the glory I am Because I know there's a change on the horizon and a change is going to come someday. But if you will, God, if it be thy will, let that day be today. This is the day that you have made. Let me rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to invite those of you who ain't been hanging out with God lately to come before this altar of this church. It's a spiritual church and we believe in God and we believe in the spirit. And I would like to pray for you that today was not just by chance. There's nothing that happened by chance. Everything happens for a reason. And I want to pray a prayer of salvation over your life. So if that be you, you can come forward at this time. Bring the children in. If you don't have a church home, if there's no church that calls you, if, if you don't have a church family, a key to life, this is a good church family. This is one we, we don't think it's about numbers, you know. And we ain't got but about a hundred something people, but we got a mission. And we believe in it. But more than that, we got a God that says you are part the moment you come. If you don't have a church home and you want one, if, if, if you're not a member of a church and you want to be, we just ask you to raise your hand. But once our children get in here, we're going to pray over this congregation. And we're going to dismiss. Children, come on in and have a seat quietly and quickly, please. Somebody, okay. All right, all right. All right. So now that we've come to the end of the service, we're going to get ready to do our offering and communion. I'm going to have who shall be doing the communion. You come forth now at this time. At this time, welcome Pastor Renee to the podium.
or prayer. Oh, my, my, wait, 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 wait. Huh? We, we're going to pray for them after there's two people on our altar. That's the most important. You know, God, let the Holy Spirit do what it do. Mm -hmm. I, I, we, ain't got, we ain't got no heaven. We need God. We believe in God. That's what keeps us saying. Listen, I done been through too much blood shit. I done been through high blood pressure. I done been blown up in a gas explosion. I done been through the windshield of a truck. Uh, that's just some of them. 